wonderful human being. Thank you so much for being here. We have some work to do, specifically with two Phalaenopsis orchids. Timestamps are in the description if you want to fast forward and get ahead of the game. I would like to explain why I am addressing these Phalaenopsis orchids today, even though at this point in time it would appear that there's not that much really that needs to be done growing well. This is my Phalaenopsis no ID, I call it Maxi, but you can see how beautiful the roots are growing and normally I would say this is going great, leave the orchid alone, even some roots will be going into the pot. So that's what I want. However, Maxi is prone to growing aerial roots and Maxi hasn't bloomed for me in two years and I would like to make sure that eventually we get to see those cute little white blooms again. What I want to do is correct Maxi's position in the pot even though it's not a threat. The pot is not gonna tilt over but I want to direct the roots into the media giving the orchid a little bit more strength and hopefully bloom. So unless something comes up that is totally bizarre, this should be pretty straightforward. Candidate number two is a no ID large Phalaenopsis called Sweetheart in my collection. Now, I should have done this when I repotted her this season. I already addressed the position in her pot, staking her more upright. She was leaning way out and her stem was extremely long. And I thought, you know what? I'm actually running out of time because in that video, I addressed three of them in one go and I didn't have enough time to contemplate removing the long stem, getting her deeper into the pot. I thought it was gonna be okay because she had viable roots in the pot, but yeah, you can see what's going on. We have some gorgeous root growth coming here as well, which I would like to get into the pot. And besides, Ingrid Fussell asked me a long time ago about an orchid that she had with a very long stem where she cut into the stem and it was woody. And she was wondering if the orchid was kaput, <laughs> as in, in jeopardy. Now, at the time, I didn't have a candidate, and when I did reposition this orchid earlier in the season, as I said, I was running out of time, and we need to do certain things when we cut into a stem, especially if we're going to put it back into a pot to avoid rot. Now the orchid is in this position where roots are going to go down. I don't want them to fail. I have a long stem in the pot. I'm going to be cutting that stem, something I should have done actually in the first repositioning of this orchid. So we're going to disturb her again, cut the stem, see what we're up against and speak through the process of what needs to be done in order to avoid rot when putting the stem back into a pot, specifically in my case being lecker and self-watering, meaning there's a lot of humidity and moisture around a stem that has recently been cut. Besides, I am sure it'll also benefit the orchid to get these roots into the pot. The next root you can see here, it's already going upright. I may resort to cutting that leaf off and exposing the root. We'll have to see how that goes because in the process of removing the wire from the stake prior to filming to save on time, I already broke one root that was growing back here. Right there is a hole. Yep, I popped that right off. It had this length. It was a shame and I also brushed against a root tip which is right here so we'll see if this one actually continues to grow I don't know however I'm gonna have to be very careful with what I've got left and that's why I'm kind of like hmm maybe I won't cut the leaf but I have another root tip coming in on the other side so ugh, collateral damage is extremely annoying but having backup is not any of you with a very keen eye, that is not scale, that is some form of mechanical damage. I'm extremely, extremely vigilant about scale on my Phalaenopsis orchids, having lost quite a few of them in the past to those nasty pests. Because we're gonna be cutting into this one stem, I believe this is the candidate we're gonna to have to work with first before we get into Maxi, and I hope that my judgment is correct. Maybe Maxi needs a stem cut as well. I won't know until I look into the pot, but let's start with Sweetheart and see how we progress. I'm not expecting any resistance here at all, seeing as she was just recently disturbed. What I am going to do is, while she's in the pot, I will cut off what I can from the leaf that's gonna be absorbed anyway. And the only reason I'm doing it now without it getting absorbed entirely is that if I want to remove this lower sheath, it'll be easier to do it while it's still green and juicy as opposed to when it gets hard. 
So I'm kind of contemplating by going for it very carefully while she's still stable in the pot. I also have to be mindful that I've got some gorgeous sunshine and I don't want her to heat up. And I also have to watch where my fingers go because there's root nubbins also around that leaf joint. So this is kind of meticulous step by step, no rush, time consuming work. And in doing so, we are exposing another root. So it was a good idea to get in here. Let me see if I can get you in at a much better angle. And I apologize in advance if my hands get in the way. I can't work what I'm working at without, you know, getting into the right position. So instead of ripping, I'm giving myself some little cuts into that leaf joint and taking it out piece by piece as best as possible around the root joint. You see, if this hardens off, then there's hardly any chance to save anything underneath without doing a lot, a lot of damage. Let's turn her around. Huh, let me just make sure. Yeah, okay. There's a root nubbin right here. Keep checking the leaves. And if this is gonna take the course of the entire afternoon, then so be it. Clearly, I don't want my leaves to burn. There we go. We've released that root nubbin. Oh, perfect. Well, perfect for me. I hope that that was in shot. We have a double root coming out here. And there's another nubbin right there. That is very close to that root tip. I wonder how much difference it would make to get it off or leave it. There's only one way to find out. Now we'll leave it. The root tip is more important and it has been released. Did some damage to a dormant root right there. Maybe it will reactivate. So let's get the orchid out of the pot and see what we're up against. The reason I can lift her up like this is because she has hardly had any time in the pot. Otherwise I wouldn't be doing this. There we go. And we can actually do another cleanup. That's awesome. You see all this? We could now be chopping off roots and roots and roots, but I'm interested in getting rid of the stem. So let's go. Even though we're going to be cutting off viable roots, it doesn't matter. She's growing new roots. But let's see if we can find a woody part of the stem. Because that was Ingrid Fessel's question. So here you have a woody part of the stem. It's really dry, really tough. It's really like a branch of a tree. And you can see that the orchid is fine, even though she could be growing better. That's climate-based, but a woody stem doesn't mean that the orchid is kaput or broken or in jeopardy. It is actually even more ideal to have a woody stem because potting up in new media also makes it easier and it won't rot because this is already all dried off and sealed. 
You can see that in my lacquer and self-watering setup, nothing has rotted despite being in a very wet environment. But I want to get more off. I want to literally get her as low in the pot as possible. So now we're going to probably risk the next layer. Let's get up there a little bit higher. There we go. And that was close. We nicked a root tip right here. That was already much longer than I expected. I hope it's going to forgive us for doing that. Now let's look at this. And now you can see how this stem has the appearance of Fusarium. But the orchid itself has anthocyanin in the blooms. So this is not Fusarium, to my understanding. But I'm going to take a picture for my records. Because Fusarium would not allow for such pretty roots to come out right now. The roots are healthy. They've got a great coloring on the velamen. There's no blackening. There's no shriveling. None of that at all. So this is an example of an orchid in itself having anthocyanin in the blooms as such. And that is why the stem also looks as if it may have Fusarium. I doubt very, very much that it is the case. Even as I scratch around it, you can see I am removing whatever the bract was there before. That was the purple part. And Fusarium, you wouldn't be doing that. With Fusarium, if you were doing this, you would be scratching and you would still have purple in the stem. And that's not the case here. So what is our next step in this situation? Ideally, we want that stem to dry out as best as possible. And I am not concerned about any roots that I've cut here. I am now concerned only about getting all the new roots into the pot. A little bit of cinnamon needs to go onto this just for the antibacterial, antifungal properties. The stem has a little bit more green to it in comparison to the one that we just saw, which was all woody, so it's good and alive. And it just needs something to protect it from getting bacteria in it straight away. It's all a bit cumbersome with all these beautiful root tips that I'm trying to be mindful of. Now any propagating aficionados, please don't be mad at me. I will not be propagating this stem even though it has viable roots and there is a chance that it would grow another little phalaenopsis out of the stem. I don't have time for that. I don't have space for that. So don't be mad. <laughs> Let's move on to Maxi. I've got Sweetheart in the shade drying out a little bit while we work on Maxi and see what we're up against there. Everybody was soaked like two or three days ago, so I'm not anticipating any resistance, but let's keep the lecker balls away from those root tips. And my hands. Oh, okay. Right. We have a little bit more work to do than I thought, unless we do a stem cut which in Maxi's case is definitely an option because look at all these years in this pot, careful with root tips, that the base of the stem is actually turning a little bit squishy. But this is not a problem. A squishy stem in a pot is not the reason why an orchid would rot out. So let me get my hands cleaned up and I'll get you in closer for this one as well. Nothing at all to worry about if you have a soft stem in your pot when you unpot your Phalaenopsis orchid. You can see how the decayed matter just comes right off. The rest of the stem is still firm. Forgive me for not being in tune with exactly what I'm doing because my eyes are also looking at the root tips. The reason for this repot is what's going on up here. And woohoo, there we have a bit of scale, but not for long. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. You see, I lost a lot of Phalaenopsis for a couple of years thinking I was inducing stem rot, whereas I had no idea how scale would find their way in until one day I had a beautiful little orchid 
die on me. I called her unicorn. She was one of my daughter's favorites. Yeah, talk about feeling bad about that one. And all the leaves at the bottom turned yellow pretty much simultaneously. And well, <laughs> there was a bevy of scale right in the stem. At least then I knew it wasn't me making a mistake. The only thing I didn't know was that Phalaenopsis and scale in my climate seemed to work together really, really well. So Ingrid Fesso from not having had a candidate, now we've got a video with two stem cuts. Let's release the bottom first, minding the gorgeous, gorgeous roots right here. Oh, whatever mistake I may make and damage the upper roots, I, oh, I have some beautiful root tips in the pot that unfortunately some were sacrificed. But when we have something like this going on, oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. I don't feel so bad. So we've cut the stem to this point right here, leaving us quite a long stem, but that is plenty fine. That can go in the pot. Sorry about the banging of the car door there. That can go in the pot. I'm not concerned about that, but what we can do is at least clean this orchid up. This is the first time she's been out of the pot in four years, so why not give her a little bit of a makeover? Even though we've got all the future coming right up here. Having a little look around. Let's check that stem. That stem looks absolutely fine to me. All right, let's not mess around too long. This orchid's probably wondering, huh? What is going on? That lecker is going to be cleaned up. I have some fresh lecker for her. The only thing I need to do is make sure that I paint the structures now while she's out of the pot. I can get underneath with some garlic alcohol to ward off any further scale that might think they're gonna get a hold and a grip. No way. She is only now, after two years, starting to grow decently. And I would like to maintain that momentum. Okay, cleaning up the pot, cleaning my workstation, and I'll be right back. And while Maxi is drying off in the shade, I put some cinnamon onto the stem as well. Here comes Sweetheart, also growing another leaf, which is fabulous. This is the most momentum that she has had in many years as well. So, of course, it would be nice to get that root in the pot. The one that's kind of coming out sideways over there. And if this is how she has to be positioned to maybe coax the root down into the pot, then that is what we're going to do. Just leave her something like this. Maybe turn her a little bit more towards the stake. Maybe we give ourselves a little bit more room here. It's a fiddle. Because I do have to tie her up and I'm going to keep her nice and low in the pot. The only thing that's hindering me from getting her even lower is that long root, but that has to stay. Okay. I'm going to be using the same lecker that I used before. And I'm contemplating adding water, but I need her in position before the water. Huh? Third hand. Because if I put water in now, she's going to be far too buoyant. We're going to have to be careful. As you can see, I'm filling Lekka up on the side with that one root tip that is tucked away down here, it's not facing. So any lecker that is falling is actually falling in the opposite direction or in the direction of the growth of the root tip and not bashing up against it. There we go. Let's do a status check. Now I'm gonna hold on to her because I don't want her to move on me and fill up with water. See how the leka also starts to move. And just keep an eye on her, I'm not getting too hot. 
Everything's good so far. What I have is mainly large LECA for this orchid, large root system. But what I'm going to do now is switch to small LECA because she doesn't have that big of a root system anymore. And all the roots that are gonna grow into the pot, I don't want them to be hunting to get into the pot. Let's make it even easier for them. It's only plain RO water in the pot right now, but what I'm going to do is leave that water in the pot so that the root that was really, really dry can soak it up. We will have an aerial root, thanks to this one sticking out right here. There. Jeez Louise. Please don't get me wrong, I love my aerial roots. But only when an orchid has a pretty good root system in the pot, and this one now doesn't. So every bit of a root system helps, and that would be it for her. I'm ready to tie her up if I need to, but I won't be fiddling around with that this time around. Just make sure the wires aren't poking anything. I do want to observe where the roots go because, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I broke off a gorgeous root that had started to grow and had some length on it because I was trying to unravel the wire. So I don't want to do that mistake again. Let them find their way, let them find their space into the pot and then we can always support her afterwards if need be. Okay, let's get to Maxi now. Holding the orchid in such a way that I do not touch any root tips, I take her by the base and cradle her in my hands for the positioning into the pot. Maxi's root system is much more extensive, so to get her back in the pot it could pose an issue unless they are nice and flexible, which by the looks of it they are. I am not happy at all with the result of this repot, but I'm not gonna be doing it again. The reason being, this was in the pot going down when I unpotted the orchid. And now it has all the hallmarks of going bolt upright and becoming an aerial root. Ah, uh, but I've got to focus and concentrate on these roots that are right here that you can see. Hopefully, there's three going down the stem right there, maybe four, one in the back. I need to get those in. Oh, it's just a little bit, bit of a shame that when I raised the orchid up and leaned her into position so that she could be in this pot for another three or four years without being disturbed, get her lean back on gradually, but I needed to secure her without that one gorgeous root tip. Looks like it's going to be growing up and out. Oh well, all I can say is, okay, it didn't work out 100%, but we have at least all the new roots that are pointing downwards, heading straight into the media. That was the objective. The objective was not to expose another root tip, and I don't like how low that wire is. This one needs to come up a bit. Too close to the root tip on the other side, and dangerously close to making this root tip right here, go up and over it. All right, well, for the fact that it was the first repot of this orchid in four years, I mean, what can I expect? The only thing now is to really monitor that these roots go down. Otherwise, I will be addressing this orchid again, just to make sure that we get it right. For now, I'm banking on what's going on at the stem, and then if a root tip starts to grow up and over, we'll deal with that when the time comes. Right. Not 100% happy, but 80% I'll take it for now. I hope that this was helpful. Turned out to be a little bit of a project as opposed to here, cut the stem, this, that, and the other. But then again, repots don't always go according to plan when they do. It's fabulous when they don't. Hmm. It takes a little bit longer to get it done. 
and I appreciate it very much if you stayed and watched to the end of the video. Thank you so much. I hope that some of this was helpful, all of it was helpful, and if none of it was helpful, let me know in the comments. Either way, I'll be happy to hear from you. Thank you for watching. I wish you a fabulous day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.